Today I will talk to you about the Zwitone 3D plugin I have developed to facilitate working with the Floor 3D card. You will find all links and references in the description here below. Disclaimer, the plugin is experimental and I do not think it will ever move from this situation. Be patient and accept some problems that may appear. Three main reasons why you will need the plugin. The first one, it is uh, because the object IDs uh, stay persistent each time you change the model in Zwitone 3D and you re-export. And this is not uh, true, unfortunately, with the export to object format uh, that I have explained in previous uh, tutorials. Second, the name of the objects uh, are the same uh, you set in the model so it will be easy for you to recognize them inside the card um, and then another important uh, feature is that you can export a complex object as if it was one and this is to avoid uh, using the object group functionality inside the card for objects that are composed by many many sub-objects and this uh, really could be tedious so um, let's first install the plugin uh, here you see the github repository where the plugin is uh, deployed uh, i didn't uh, share the uh, source code uh, as the source code is very very dirty and very very poor um, and uh, so i prefer let's say to keep uh, the source code private uh, so you have to trust me basically uh, and uh, um, but let's say i will publish here the compiled binaries uh, um, of the plugin um, let's say whenever uh, i will do a new version uh, so uh, in order to download the plugin you just click on the link that is here in the uh, description and uh, you will see, uh, let's say, the plugin appear here with uh, the extension uh, SH3P. Okay. Then uh, you uh, click on the plugin. Okay. And uh, uh, usually, what happens is that, uh, uh, let's say, you receive a message that is saying that the plugin was installed. Uh, this is uh, only valid when you are running Zwitone 3D in Windows. Uh, and so basically in Windows, uh, the just clicking on the plugin is enough to install the plugin. Uh, then in order to verify that the plugin was actually installed, usually let's say uh, you go uh, to this um, uh, folder uh, inside your Windows uh, installation. Um, and you look for the uh, plugin that uh, should be now copied here in this folder. And uh, let's say uh, it is enough after to restart uh, Zwitone 3D to uh, have the plugin uh, operational inside the tool. Um, if you are running in Linux, uh, you uh, will have the uh, just to do a manual operation. Uh, once you have downloaded the plugin, just copy the plugin to uh, this directory, okay, inside uh, your Linux installation. Um, of course, uh, you have to adapt, uh, let's say, the names of the directory to your specific environment, and usually it means, uh, let's say, replace uh, the user ID with your own uh, user ID. Okay. Uh, if you are in Windows, uh, so you can click on the plugin. If you are in Linux, you have to copy the file. Uh, important uh, note, uh, it is better to use the plugin with the same Zwitone 3D version with which the plugin was uh, compiled. This way you have the guarantee that uh, it will work correctly. Um, I will tag any new version of the plugin with the Zwitone 3D version it is made for, so that you have a reference. Uh, let's now do some uh, demo, okay? 
so when you uh, have installed the plugin uh, you uh, will find the plugin function here in the tools menu of Switome 3D um, so uh, imagine that you have uh, now let's say the this uh, is uh, your the model of your home uh, according to all the other uh, tutorials that I have done so far um, I will add uh, one specific object that uh, can uh, illustrate the uh, grouping uh, functionality of the of the plugin. So let me take uh, a, a mannequin and put it in the living room, so you can see here. Um, otherwise, uh, let's say as I have explained to you. Uh, say it is important to uh, name each and all of the object with uh, a name that you will recognize and uh, ensure that the name is uh, unique uh, let's say I will not do any control in the plugin extraction that uh, you have unique object name and so uh, when you are importing in the card in uh, Home Assistant this could fail so uh, I uh, suggest you in, in to use, uh, let's say, unique name for each of the object. So you can see here there are quite a significant amount of object. Um, and let's say there is the one uh, that uh, I have uh, created myself right now, so the mannequin. Um, I will change the name of the mannequin. Um, and I will call it uh, like uh, me uh, and uh, let's say I will show you at the same time a uh, um, functionality so I will put a, a sharp after uh, my name to tell uh, to uh, the, the plugin to export this uh, uh, mannequin object as a whole say so um, in a way that uh, it will not uh, export the objects with all the sub objects and sub object name uh, the mannequin has up to a uh, hundred different sub objects so uh, when you export putting a sharp after the name uh, as you see here you uh, basically export with only one object name that will be NDHA and that's it let's say and uh, this is very very useful uh, imagine that uh, you need to uh, hide the mannequin when there is nobody at home um, in the case you uh, didn't have this uh, functionality of grouping uh, with the sharp uh, you had uh, in uh, the card you had to uh, group all the and each single object uh, sub object of the mannequin uh, inside an, ob an object group uh, and uh, this could be very very tedious for 100 uh, 100 sub object okay so now i have done my um, my renaming with the sharp and of course i can do it for any other object here say all these objects even if they have uh, a single name you will see that when you export to uh, home assistant with the floor 3d card uh, they will have some uh, underscore uh, with an id to state what what is the different sub objects that are composing the object eh? so if you want for instance the armchair to be exported as only one object you also put a sharp at the end of the name okay so it's quite easy now uh, now that we are all set we uh, click on export object to us and then what we do is we go to our uh, config page config folder in home assistant and we save the zip file uh, with the, the uh, full set of files exported by the export to us uh, plugin and now i go 
here in the folder where I have exported the zip file and I tell to extract here once you have finished uh, your extraction uh, and you see all the files have been copied here uh, you will see that all the models have uh, uh, the name home uh, uh, the home.obj file the home.mtl file and I have added as well a home.json file that uh, you can see it will be interesting to have the full list of uh, um, of objects uh, um, in the in the floor 3d card um, okay so now uh, we are ready to go to um, uh, home assistant um, and to uh, create a new card based on the model exported with the plugin so as usual uh, add card and floor 3d card and in the model, uh, I put uh, home, uh, path is uh, local, and you have seen before, I have copied it to the YouTube 2 uh, folder, the object, object name is home, and the MTL name is also home.mtl. Uh, I, for the moment I don't uh, use this JSON, I will uh, explain you later in a, in a different tutorial. So I click on save. And here we go, we have the new model uh, that is being exported with the mannequin here let's say so uh, just to show you uh, what I told you about the naming of the objects so if I double click on the uh, lamp uh, here uh, you will see that the lamp will be called with the, uh, at the root of the name the same name that you have uh, uh, set inside uh, uh, home assistant plus some additional IDs that are, uh, uh, how to say, um, uh, identifying the sub-objects. But important point is that whenever you will re-export the model uh, using uh, the export to us plugin um, and where this object is as defined, this object and all the sub-objects will be called exactly the same. So all the references that we have created inside Floor3D card will stay exactly the same. You will not have to change the bindings. And um, another important point, um, the mannequin. Uh, say, so I didn't show you what happens when you export uh, the mannequin via the normal export to object. But... Uh, the one that I've already tried will uh, know that uh, uh, each and single small sub-object of the full mannequin object has its own name. So wherever you click, uh, depending on the objects that you are clicking, you will have a different name of the object. Wh because I have used the sharp at the end of the object name as I showed you before, now, wherever you click, you will always have the NDHA object name. And this is a very, very useful. Let's say, imagine that you, for instance, you want to um, associate the uh, mannequin to the presence. Uh, you just have to do uh, a simple entity with a simple object in order to hide the um, object when it is not present uh, at home okay so uh, there are uh, other aspects related to using the plugin but for today i think it is uh, enough we can stop here don't forget to
to uh, subscribe to the channel and to uh, like the video that you are seeing, if you like it, of course. Thank you.